Uh, okay, well, welcome everybody. Um, I'm uh, Blake. I am the building manager at Kieran Timberlake, um, an architecture firm you might have heard of here in uh, Philadelphia. Um, coming to you from our uh, beautiful space in Northern Liberties, uh, the former Ort Leeds bottling plant. This is where the uh, the beer on the, the the floor that you're looking at now. Um, the beer used to be made across the street and then pumped across to this floor. Um, this is actually the second level here. Um, and then packaged up and then sent back downstairs to the loading dock. I don't have a picture of that, but, um, oh, actually there, there was one later. Um, and then the beer was uh, sent out to um, everybody in Philadelphia. And so this, uh, I'll go to the next slide here. Um, here's an exterior shot of uh, Ortlieb's bottling plant. Um, it was built in 1949 and um, Karen Timberlake bought this in 2013 um, after it had, I guess, a lot of lives even before um, uh, we purchased it and renovated it. it was, at one time after the bottling plant, it was a a, a boxing there they had a boxing ring in here there was a place where they had raves there was another brewery uh at one point there was a synagogue in here um and over the years it, there, it was just really fell into uh disrepair uh kieran timberlake fully restored this building in uh 2013 and we moved in by 2015 uh 66 square feet we have three different levels. Um, we have a garage, there's a fitness center, uh, two kitchens, um, lots of conference spaces, um, very open floor plan as you saw from the, um, the first slide, uh, open floor plan on, on the, the first level as well. We have around 100 architects, researchers, uh, communication staff, administrative staff. So we are, um, and we are all pretty much fully back uh, from COVID. Um, it was about, it's been about two years since we sent everybody, uh, everybody home. And uh, so about a, two months ago, um, we are, we're fully back. So um, we are kind of reinventing ourselves post COVID. Um, and then that also goes into some of the things that we'll be talking about today. Um, so, what we're, I'll talk about what we're gonna what we're doing here at Kieran Timberlake, and uh, as far as heading towards our zero waste goal, uh, we're not at zero, but we're getting as close as we can get. Um, and I'll just go through some of the um, you know, really the general sort of streams of output um, and. Um, uh, organization and output that we do with all with all of our trash, our recycling. Um, some, you know, might be sort of uh, familiar to you from what you do at home um, or in your office. And um, I'll just go. I'll just go into it. So we actually have ten active streams of um, uh, output that that comes out. Of, out of our office. Um, our regular recycling, as you see, see about, you know, cardboard, composting, um, and that's just an overview. I'm going to go through each of them, and some of them, again, seem familiar, but they're also a little different than what we, um, what you might have in a municipal uh, pickup. And if there's any questions along the way, um, I don't know if uh, Marianne can field those, or if we can wait till the end as well. Um, yeah, I can. I, let's wait. If people want to put. OK, OK, in. we can wait. You can take notes. Yeah. yeah. Um, first of all, with everything that we bring into our office, especially to our desks, what we're eating and um, drinking and um, uh, also our packages and uh, samples that come in, we have a we really try to operate a pack in and pack out philosophy. Uh, we don't have trash bins at our individual workstations. The only bins that are at our workstations are for uh, recycling paper. So if you want to throw away your aluminum foil or your gum wrapper or the gum in your mouth, you actually have to go to the kitchen. There's two locations, upstairs and downstairs kitchen. 
um, where you have to go and sort out um, uh, sort out what you've brought from your desk. And some people don't like that. I admit it does take a little extra work. Um, I've adopted, but I, <laughs> it's not the best term, but it's like a slop bucket policy where I have a, like a bucket. Like you remember the if you're you know the Johnson's popcorn so you can get down the shore. I have one of those and I fill that up during the uh uh during the day and then at the end of the day I go and uh distribute everything from the uh to the different bins in uh in our kitchens. So everyone's can will have to come up with their own way. Some people do it throughout the day. Uh, I do it at the end. Um, this is We've just started introducing this um, new way to identify what is compost recycling and what goes to the trash. You've seen these kinds of things maybe at Whole Foods before or um, uh, some other retail establishment. Uh, I've been sort of pushing for this for a long time. And finally, this company called Divert um, uh, came along and they they offered these ones that were sort of these, these they fit these these sort of uh, bubble tops fit over existing uh, containers that you can just buy anywhere. And I, the, the goal is that we're really trying to be able to show people what goes where. Um, there's a lot of signs, there's a lot of nuance with this and that and what is that and this and that. And you can read the signs that people are busy. This is so this is going to this is going to be our test on the visual. Um, and you know what's also different between what we do in the office and what you might do at home is that we have a private company uh, that picks up our recycling. Uh, mostly, I'm gonna, mostly with the recycling, um, but also compost. But that's that's different than what you might find in the city or municipality. Um, they will take some things, for example, pizza boxes. This, everything comes down to pizza boxes. What to do with them? We can talk about those later. But um, no one knows what to do. They're like ah, there's mixed messages with the pizza boxes, but which they actually can be composted if you shred them up. But nobody has a pizza box shredder at home, I'm sure. Um, and they can. Um, but our recycling. Uh, company takes pizza boxes, um, whereas the city um, does not want them. They're supposed to go into the trash. In the city. Um, so anyway, uh, we just start. We just rolled out this program this week about the uh, the, the visuals, and we'll I uh, will have to report back on how they work. Um, but I think it's a good start. There's a, a yeah, the fake hamburger and like the fake apple. I think it's pretty cool. Um, so. Again, our just our, you know we have a regular recycling stream that's similar to what you have at home. This is your um, mixed paper, aluminum foils, um, boxes. Um, what what our, our biggest um, and that's uh, uh, this captures a lot. Um, if there could be a more unilateral stream for each of these, that would be great because it's less sorting and it's more um, and it's more uh, sort of guaranteed to actually get recycled. Um, so that's probably looks familiar to you. Here's our ongoing challenges with um, our, our co-mingled matches that we have a lot of, you know, we have a lot of plastics that come in, uh, especially when, you know, before COVID when we were having events catered here um, that, that are not be able to be recycled despite the number on the bottom. Um, there's, some of the recycling municipalities will say, oh, you know, we take the one, twos, and threes, and we'll talk about that in a second, but they'll say, but we don't take this and that. Um, we recycle what our recycling person takes, and, and they take they take more than the city, but they don't take like those big um, uh, those plastic trays and utensils, and of course, straws. And then also, we have just have a lot of contamination in our recycling from, things that should be go to another stream like cardboard. People will just throw a whole like uh, <laughs> cardboard box into the recycling. And, um, and if you that's if you look on the right, there's a, there, a picture of our just in any old Tuesday um, of, of the recycling of, of the trash and try this picture of a trash where you see, you know, these aluminum foil and there's a cup and the trident pack and the paper and that's, uh, very typical. So that's um, what we're, we're really trying to give people better uh, information and incentive to um, get those into the proper streams and not in the trash. Um, 
Alexa, do you want to talk just a couple, a little bit about the the, uh, the 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 numbers conspiracy, and people can sure. jot down that podcast as well. Yeah, I just learned definitely. this this week about the, I, not conspiracy, but it's you know an interesting story anecdote. So I just put the podcast link in the um, in the chat if anyone wants to listen. I highly recommend it. I think it's fascinating. Um, but when, so Blake and I presented sort of similar presentation to our office, uh, about a week ago about their waste streams. Um, and I talked a little bit about plastic and how it's very difficult to recycle and, um, that a lot of people don't know that it's only about 8% of, uh, plastic from the U S is actually recycled, even though people are putting it into bins um, and people are putting it into bins um, because there are these numbers on the plastic which denote uh, like the type of plastic. And they're like one and two is very, is well, relatively easy to recycle as plastic goes. And then like seven and three are just really difficult. So oftentimes recycling programs don't take them or they're just, you know, they might go on the recycling, but oftentimes they aren't actually recycled. Um, so there's this interesting podcast that came out, I think in 2020, but it recently won some sort of award. And at this point in time, I forget which award it was, but they re, um, re-aired it because uh, they had just won an award. And basically, it's an NPR reporter talking about she found the person, she tracked down the person who actually came up with this scheme to make these numbers and the recycling symbol on plastics. And essentially, it was just a marketing ploy to get people to think that these things were actually recyclable because consumers were, were really outraged that <laughs> there was all this plastic pr production and that nothing was happening at the end of life. They just had to throw it in the trash. So that's sort of how... It was really a, a lot of it was a marketing tactic to get people to just put plastic in the recycling bin, even though a lot of the times it actually isn't recycled. So um, really fascinating to hear the reporter talk to um, this this person who came up with the with the marketing scheme. And yeah, highly recommend the podcast. It's it's great. Um, all right. I all think, right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna enjoy that later. We can talk. Ask talk plastics later too because it's sort of endless conversation um all right our, you know our, our sort of most recent as of three years ago we've brought a very robust composting program into our our office we use bennett compost which is very common um they do residential as well what's what's different about our composting on a on a commercial scale that what they can't do on the residential scale is they can take um, meat products, bones, fish products, um, those kind of items that you can't put into your um, your residential stream. Uh, so we're capturing a lot that goes into uh, into that. And, and, and I would say 50% of it is just um, use coffee grounds that, you know, this, this office goes through a lot of coffee and it's a it's a lot of weight and material and um all of that is getting uh composted now as, as well as our paper all of our paper towels from uh our restrooms and just regular paper towels uh so it's been uh, it's been very successful so far our fun fact is that um after we started our compost, I, th this is this is a my weighing of trash bin device in the garage uh, I spent some um, uh, messy hours um, weighing trash every every week, and I would do it before, you know, the day before the pickup. Um, so after you know, we were weighing it consistently for several months, um, and then until we kind of plateaued, we got a sort of average. And then after we started composting and really started taking off, and we got sort of. Um, uh, everything ironed out, we reduced our trash output by 50%. So that was significant. And it, and, and it was it was fun to report on that because it really showed an impact of what we were actually doing. And it really sort of, people were taken aback by the amount of amount of material that we, uh, we should be catching and that we were not before. So um, anyway, that was pretty cool. Uh, we, and again, we don't know post-COVID. We've had uh, two years of 
uh, a slightly occupied building. So we'll see uh, moving forward where we're at. Uh, ongoing challenges with our composting is that there's a lot of material that's uh, branded and marketed as compostable, um, but the facility at Bennett is not that we use is not able to um, compost those plastic type of uh, compostables. There's, I get, from what I understand, there's not a lot of facilities in uh, this country that they, they operate at a different temperature level than would be at a sort of mid-level composting facility. And there's not tons of them out there. So you know, technically they are compostable if you have the right equipment and probably use a lot of energy um, um, to make those compostable. So yeah, that's one of the challenges, those, those sort of infiltrating into the office uh, every now and, and again. Um, during COVID, when we weren't having, uh, we weren't uh, sharing dishes and stuff, we all of our um, utensils were uh, bamboo, and, or like the wood products, and they, they, uh, um, we, you know, we use those, and those are fully compostable. And then we just have our regular trash stream. Um, again, um, the, th the the one thing that that's changed, we used to all those plastic bags um, that used to go in the trash, we have been collecting them. Um, we're seeing a lot less of the plastic bags now, which is great due to the um, policy now in Philadelphia. We're seeing uh, uh, very few uh, plastic shopping bags coming into the office, which is great. Um, but before that, because all, I mean, they were going into the landfill and then we were, well, I was just collecting them on the wall and then I was taking them down to, um, Acme, which recycled them, we think. We have no idea if they actually did it. You probably saw those at the front of uh, Acme. But now that they're not giving out shopping bags, I haven't actually looked to see if they are uh, keeping the program of um, recycling their plastic bags. I, I doubt at some, I, I think at some point that'll go away and we'll have to get creative. But the good news overall is that um, we're seeing a lot less of it. I think that the, the, the um, policy is largely working. Um, again, just card, we, we, this cardboard is a very easy um, uh, thing to recycle as far, you know, as far as energy being used, as long as it's fairly clean with not a lot of plastic on it. Uh, so we're always trying to separate that even from our um, commingled pile. So we have all of these, we tell people, because there's a lot of Amazon boxes that come in. We have, a, we have just a lot of shipments that come into this office from um, outside vendors, uh, personal items. And then, so we, you know, we're, we're giving people as much knowledge as we can as to where to put their cardboard. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's largely successful. Um, you know, it's just, you have to break it, you have to break your cardboard down. And that's just the one step you have to do. Um, and, and then this card and our particular cardboard uh, stream, we, this is where we put our pizza boxes and uh, the guy takes them. Um, this is the thing I said before, we have, we only have next to our uh, workstations, clean office paper, magazines, tracing paper. Um, this is something we want to catch before it goes into the com commingled pile because um, even more than cardboard, it's a very clean um, stream to recycle. It doesn't take as much energy to turn this uh, clean paper back into other products. So we're really trying to um, separate that um, before it gets mixed up into the commingled stream because it just gets sorted and, and it's less likely to be caught. This is a really probably the most direct and oldest uh, form of recycling out there. So it's, um, you know, it's largely successful has been for offices and there's, there's a lot of infrastructure from vendors out there to uh, make that happen. So that's the only, you can only put your white paper in, in there, uh, even though it looks like a trash can. Um, we also do uh, uh, battery recycling. There's, we have a lot of batteries that get used here in electronics and cameras and measuring devices and you know, just um, a, lot of electro, a lot of electronics, including um, use computer batteries or um, 
you know, tool batteries. So there's this company called Big Green Box. You can just order, uh, you order the box and then you fill it up with your alkaline, lithium batteries, whatever you have, you stick it in there. And then when it's full, you just package it up and it's already labeled with the proper um, hazmat ratings and shipping ratings. And you just send it back and you order a new box. So um, very easy. I think it's about $60 a box. Um, but we are not having any of our batteries go into the trash, which is fantastic. Um, also, some of the more industrial size batteries um, we have, for example, just building stuff, um, emergency lighting that you see uh, that goes on after your power goes off. Those, those are all on uh, battery that lasts for you know, an hour or so after your power goes out. And they have to be replaced every two or three years. So just recently, we did all of them. There must have been 85 um, emergency lights in, um, you know, in our entire building. Um, so, but we were able to collect those and put them on a pallet and send them to uh, a place Revolution Recycling, which I'll talk about in a second, which accepts those items and uh, recycles them properly. Um, we are uh, we offer a reuse of our packing and shipping materials. We have so much bubble wrap and Amazon wrap and all that stuff that comes in to the office. And um, so we're, we've dedicated a space to save that. Um, we're really hoping that people will take the effort to unpack uh, their boxes and then keep, um, you know, keep the box that we do, boxes relatively uh, uh, not flattened. I mean, you can flatten boxes and recycle them, but we try to keep, keep some boxes too. If they're in good shape, then we can reuse for a lot of things that we send out as well as uh, when we're, uh, if you're shipping something out for personal items or for uh, work materials, um, we're tr we try to encourage people to reuse all of that bubble wrap instead of using um, more of the new stuff. Uh, I talked about the shopping bags, that's, um, so we'll talk about shop, talk about the shop, a whole other sort of world in our um, office here. If you look at that that loading dock up on the left, that 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 dock there, that was actually the loading dock that the beer went out. Um, those were garage doors originally where that, where that uh, uh, those big glass pieces are on the right. And that's where the beer got shipped out of. So now it's our shop. Um, unlike a lot of uh, uh, architecture firms, we have a full fabrication shop, so we can do we do a lot of one to one models. Um, we can do you know in in in, in real size what uh, clients might want to see to come in. So we do um, full mock ups. We still do uh, you know, a lot of models, uh, but the shop generates a lot of trash. Um, and we um, have found this company. If you I don't know if you've heard of them, they're called Revolution Re Recovery. Uh, I think they're up in Port Richmond, up along the water. Um, cool facility. I'll show you a picture uh, in a second. So they they accept a lot of uh, the construction materials, building materials that uh, we really that normally would just end up in the trash. Um, they have a premier sorting facility uh, up there, and they you know they'll they'll take drywall and 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 uh and put it into like pallets and take it somewhere else to be reused also with lots of the uh the wood pieces um but we, we our biggest challenge with this is um um making sure that it just doesn't turn into a regular trash can i'll show you a picture of that in a second so this is uh you see, see the left that is revolution recycling um they have these sort of like sorting hoppers and they do a lot of even plastics that um they would be more likely to do some of those other plastics like the, the, the four fives and sixes, like for example, this big uh, five gallon paint buckets. Um, they, they, last time I was up there, they had, it was an entire, uh, like it looked, you know, what they should like when they crush cars, it was like that, but it was, it was uh, the, the plastic uh, paint buckets. Um, they turn a lot of wood scraps into mulch. Um, they take uh, wood, rubble, concrete, and they can turn that back into um, road base and backfill. Um, so we, you know, we always have this ongoing um, 
cycle of these boxes coming in empty, we're filling them up with appropriate materials and they go out. I mean, we, I mean it does, it is at a cost, but um, it is, uh, you know, it's good to know that it's going mostly somewhere um, appropriate. And they, they, they do send us a um, uh, quarterly report, which I didn't put in here, that shows how much of, uh, how much we diverted from landfills. So that's pretty cool. Here's the challenges in the shop and everywhere is, is the, the styrofoam. There's so much styrofoam that comes into our office with all the packing materials. I mean, it's really, it's, it's almost silly sometimes the amount of, and like packing peanuts that aren't um, biodegradable, just the foam and foam. And uh, of course, in an architecture firm, making a lot of, doing a lot of modeling and sculpting, uh, there's a lot of foam for that. So, um, I, you know, there's not a, there's not a really great replacement material on the art uh, especially on the modeling side of that um i'm sure there's a lot of good options that are out there um uh as far as foam replacements but what our challenge is is what comes into us that we don't have any con control over i mean we could we could sort of do a you know we're not going to accept your uh, items if they're you know if these are non-recyclable foams or um, packing material but you know that doesn't that doesn't work for the for a business so that's just an ongoing challenge um that we you know that you know we've identified and we're uh, uh going to work towards um finding better solutions and mitigating the issue um the, and then the other issue is that people just using those revolution recovery boxes for like just their like their trash from their car, <laughs> the Dunkin' Donuts bags. And uh, so that sort of that is just taking up space that like most stuff in the Dunkin' Donuts bag could be probably recycled or put in a proper trash can. It's just taking up space in a box that's going out for other materials. Um, we also have, you know, a free cycle, free shelf. Uh, uh, we have so many different samples that are coming in of carpet, wood, acrylic, all these little pieces and doodads and they pile up and they pile up and, um, uh, you know, architects want to see about 25 different samples for the one they, ones they choose. So the 24 of those samples don't make it to the products. And so they end up somewhere. And um, so we they're all, a lot of these, pieces are, you know, they're kind of like cool pieces. You could use, use them as coasters or art projects or something around your house. You know, when, if you're creating a lot of carpet samples, um, normally those, um, a lot of those can be recycled through Revolution Recycling. But first, first of all, we have our free shelf. So we have a shelf that anything, you can go down there and put anything that's free. You can just take of all these materials and, um, you know, it's anything from these glass pieces, uh, again, like these carpet, I have my, I have my whole basement carpeted from all the samples, um, that I, I took from here. So, um, again, that's just another, another, uh, stream for us. So that sort of wraps up our, uh, our output streams. Um, uh, here's just some, I'll just go over a couple of practices that we go through, uh, go, uh, go through that we, um, have as well. Um, we have gotten rid of pretty much all of our uh, dis disposable flatware and um, dishes. So we have we have two dishwashers. So now that we're at, you know somewhat out of COVID, we've returned to our dish service. So mugs, uh, we're getting back to our plates and our um, our, our flatware, um, and they all uh, get washed and recycled. Uh, well, the reused uh, daily. Uh, we also have uh, two water machines that we offer for our um, employees and a uh, bottle filling machine in the fitness center. So it's so funny when I was talking to Alexis and Marianne earlier and I realized I was drinking out of a plastic bottle, but <laughs> it was left around from something else. So sorry, but we're really, we're really seeing less and less plastic bottles being used on here. More people having water bottles and, um, um, uh, we have like glass pint glasses and things like that. So um, that's just another, another thing. And then wrapping up here, um, we really value always evaluating our cleaning products that we uh, have at the office. Um, 
prior to uh, maybe about four or five years ago, we were using most of the stuff that op most offices use, your regular Lysols and your um, soft scrubs and kind of, you know, all the, the F rated materials. And um, so we did a deeper dive into, uh, and it's always an ongoing um, effort to find products that, um, that are safe for the environment, but also are effective. And also that our cleaning people like to use. Um, so we've gone to a lot, and then we, you know, everything was going really well. We had a, a pretty much a very much a vinegar based um, cleaning regimen and then COVID hit. And then we, we went all, <laughs> all the way back to kill all germs with as much chemicals as possible. <laughs> So, and uh, as Marianne and I said today, and then we realized it really wasn't touching everything, but we didn't, you know, we didn't know. So um, we had, we bought, we bought tons of Clorox wipes and then they weren't available and Lysol and all that kind of stuff. And you couldn't find it. Um, and we were still kind of getting through that supply as we um, transition back to a more sustainable model. Again, a lot of vinegar based, um, and things that also don't come packaged as um, with water. Um, that one, if you look at the truce, that's a wood cleaner and that's just um, very similar to the add tablets to, um, uh, you know, tablets to water for cleaning products. So that's like a wood cleaner. You just fill it up, it, it's just powder in there and then you fill it up with water. Um, and then also we, we, because we have a fitness center, we also have laundry service. So we've just, um, we just ordered our first supply of the, the lot, the waterless laundry sheets and I mean the laundry detergent. So we're going to try those out. Uh, so, uh, Alexis is really kind of, it's helping spearhead this, uh, effort and help, helping us find some, um, new products to use. And, you know, we're, we're, we're lucky in the sense that some other offices uh, in larger buildings uh, aren't as lucky as that. We, you know, we we have building owners and uh, and partners who are committed to, uh, committed to this effort. So you know, we have a lot of leverage to try out um, uh, new products. Things work, things don't work, uh, and they're you know luckily to afford us a budget to be able to do that. Um, a lot of bigger buildings. Um, either out of willingness or a lot of mostly bottom line issues um you don't have that flexibility so I'm, i really appreciate um the leadership at the firm for um you know allowing us to sort of play around and 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 and, and you know get get closer to uh, a more sustainable model um just a lot you know like a couple of things just ongoing challenges for all this is that it's really it's trouble is constant reinforcement or is just signage adjustments. You know, I, you know, I have other things to do at work than to have to, you know, try to be a sheriff. I don't want to be a sheriff. I don't want to be a finger wagger. Um, so it's, you know, it's individual compliance is really kind of key to all of this. And, you know, we're, so, you know, we have to be a salespeople and we have to, we have to, sell it for the, you know, you know, not only because it's right, um, but, you know, it's because it's, um, you know, it's easy. It's not, you know, it's not that difficult to do. Um, you just take a little time, but we're, but we're trying to make it easier by better signage, um, better visuals, better communication, and just constant reinforcement. Uh, again, we just have a lot of uh, another thing is just incoming materials that we can't control is that, you know, with the foams, all the air filters that I replace every every month, there's like so much waste, we can't do anything with them, they have to get thrown out. Uh, again, and, and then adopt it and, and then translating all of these efforts to a cleaning staff that comes in at night from a separate company who I rarely see. Um, so um, we used to have a, we used to have a daytime uh, cleaning person, but we only have a nighttime staff now, and they're great. But um, I'm not always here, and I have to be able to to be sure that they're following best practices as well. So it's a lot of communication with them, uh, and then 
uh, we identify like we, we, we don't have a very robust uh, electronic recycling program that we're going to be working on. We have a lot of computers, um, electronic equipment, but also because we have a lot of sensitive information on our uh, laptops and hard drives, um, we have to make sure that's done right. Uh, I guess everybody should do that. I mean, just dropping it at the, um, you know, the twice every once every two months city thing isn't going to do it for us. We have to we have to have a, a company that's going to take the security seriously and the recycling seriously. So we're working on it and we'll get there and I'll take, you know, if there's any suggestions that anyone else has used, I'll take that too. And um, just as this last resource page, um, our recycling is done by Recycling Express. That's our company that we use. Bennett Compost, I mentioned, Bingry Box, Revolution Recycling, um, and those display tops that we saw for uh, for the for the different um, for the bins is from uh, Divert, um, and they've been they've been great to work with, and they have a whole sort of variety for different sizes and spaces and uh, different price points as well. Uh, anyway. Uh, open it up for questions and comments and suggestions and you can also take my email if you have any questions about it, anything um i i'm an ongoing learner with with all of this um you know i don't come from um a, a science background and understanding this i come from operations and um so you know i can always learn uh more about the, the 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 science and the the research and also more about um you know boots on the ground stuff so anyway so I, this is like so much to unpack Blake thank I you I know I know it's so it's just like it's too much like, it's like <laughs> incredibly thrilling to have you here to have such a commitment to this incredibly complex situation um and so I think I, I might just, I think we should just open it up for people to jump in and ask questions. I have a million questions, which I might just email you later. Yeah, sure. Um, Anyone but, can email me too. But know, I feel questions like- Questions you're afraid everyone, to ask. Yeah, and, and also I, I'd love for us to partner with you on, you know, I think we're going to, um, you know, we're taking notes and we're gonna get back in touch with you in terms of this really supporting this, this the creation of the of this partner's guide. So really appreciate that. And again, I'm going to open it up. If anybody wants to jump in, why don't we just, um, why don't we just jump in whoever wants to ask a question? I tried to get to the questions in the chat that I knew the answers to, but I know there's some I couldn't answer. So one, one thing I do want to add, like we do work with uh, Revolution Recovery and we know Fern Gookin really well. And FYI, um, the five gallon plastic um, container is like the only thing that <laughs> that actually has a market. That's what we understand from from her. So so it's uh, <laughs> just a little info on that. But yeah. OK, like so you're muted. Go ahead, Christina. No, I was just saying Blake was muted. <laughs> okay, I was, uh, yeah, sorry. I was just gonna say the um, the um, Revolution Recovery also has a fabulous art program. If you've heard of it, it's R-A-R-A-I-R. -R -R. They have resident artists that, um, they like hang out there and they have offices and they just pick through all the stuff that comes in. They assemble some incredible, uh, incredible artwork, in, uh, outdoor installations and um, collage. And it's, it's, it's cool stuff. We could ask some questions in the chat. Um, Let me see the chat. Eli asked if, if you guys have seen a reduction in paper since since COVID? Um, uh, it's hard as hell since we're, since we're, we're just back. Um, I haven't, I haven't noticed, um, you know, I, I, I feel like there had, this is just my own observation. I feel like there has been a reduction in paper overall over the last, just in my working life in the last 
10 years and it wasn't like that you know when we with the computer revolution said we were, we were going to have less paper then all of a sudden there was there was 10 times more paper but i feel like just from my own observation it's there's definitely less i would say i can't really put a number on it but a, a measurable amount i had a really um, sorry I had a really picky question that Love it. Does, it's hard to read from the from the chat because it was you were you showed a, a slide that had like it had straws and it had all the trays from catering and then it had a cardboard box. And I guess I, my question oh. at that moment was, what's the problem with the cardboard box? And is it that people throw everything in the same box and in the commingled or is it? It's that the cardboard box should go to the cardboard place, or yeah, I mean the the yeah that's it doesn't contaminate the um, commingled. It does if if they don't, it, it, and this does come down to personalities by the person who actually takes the recycling. Um, is um, it takes up a lot of space if it's just a box thrown in there. Oh, I and see. It, and it takes up a lot of space, and it's um, and it just requires more sorting where we have a direct cardboard line that we can get rid of that so um, yeah. you know it's I'm not right. the it's no, not I'm, the end of the world if it ends up there i mean yes real, no no i was worried that it was like you have to take off the amazon labels because they have plastic in them or you have to no, but, oh no i'm right i'm right there with you on the no breaking you're down, true. that's breaking down is, boxes yeah breaking down boxes i'm just i i'm always breaking down boxes guy and um <laughs> and so and like and there's a good question you know all the plastic and the st stuff like that that comes with it you know it's, uh, you know from our from this the vendor that we use he you know i'm like you know we're trying or he's like just try your best he's just like if there's a big like bill of lading in a big plastic envelope come on that can go but then you know you're not gonna you could take you could spend half an hour getting every little uh, you know <laughs> plastic knit off of it so it's we're trying our best we we saw that also that you had like this big pile of bricks and block. Is that sort of work from from your building or? Yeah, some of it was work from our building, um, right. and some of it, like for example, we did a um, we did a new building at Old Pine, um, and we had probably four very lar large large um, uh, brick mockups, which were about maybe four by four that we brought masons in and they did it and then they, you know they they eventually chose but we had so much material left over from all of that um and you know it was it was great to be able to have that service to be able to just put those in the boxes and go because you know i don't know what we would have done with all of that uh normally because we you know we just we literally we took a sledgehammer to the, to the right, nice right. mock-ups and put it in the the boxes we uh, i think they work with I think Revolution Recovery works with um, Greg Trainer. Are you familiar with him? I don't know Greg, but Philly Community Core, because they okay. actually reuse, and I think they have a relationship where they reuse. Because uh, I was thinking, if you had a lot of jobs like that, <laughs> you know, we had, the, yeah. You know, it's interesting as far as like when I showed you this, the pictures of the free stuff. Um, I. I we've purged a lot but you should have seen how much we purge and i wish there would have been an outlet for these uh fold outs and fold outs of little terracotta samples and like glass samples and metal samples and you know, i'd reached out to firm gook and i was like Do, can you guys use it she's like ah you know how many architecture firms we hear from about this and, and Someone's got it's not, someone, someone's got a million idea, million dollar idea there. Got to put it together. Um, you know, build a house with all these glass samples. Yeah, I was wondering if, like, I don't know, the high schools or maybe not. It's I don't know, and it's just also okay. managing it and yeah. Yeah, picking yeah. up, and um, so it's just, it, it's a it's it's a lot of material that comes in the door, and the, the sales people. We just got rid of um, we we had a lot of product binders which was two walls full of product binders that were multi-fold out, um, you know, they're anything from uh, wood samples to like um, metal fixtures. And they just, we had, we, we sent them to revolution recovery. We don't know how much was actually recovered out of it, but um, you know, a lot of this, you know, 
that just collected over the years. And I think that was stuff like that was back in the eighties and the nineties that was still here. And I think a lot of those, um, a lot of the, there's a lot less product um, folders coming through um, than there used to be because so much more is available to view uh, online in, you know, real life situations or in, you know, 3D renderings, um, that kind of stuff. So it is kind of good to see, you don't, you're not having salespeople show up with, um, you know, 12 binders as much anymore. Yes, so could you talk about the comp your, the composting one more time? I may, we sure. may have myths, but there's a question about meat versus, um, uh, you know, I know circle compo compost won't take meat. You know, they only take other stuff, but right. it, then it does take meat. Well, they take it in commercial uses like ours. And the, re the reason is, um, yeah, it's very, it's very pragmatic. It's just like, is, is that um, because all our, we have very large bins, that everything goes to in the garage and those, the whole bins are removed and replaced every day. So if you have your reusable can't container like I do at home and you start getting meat in there and fish, it's, it, yeah. they're going to get really nasty, really fast. You know, all of a sudden you have other things, you're growing things that are alive. And um, so that's, that's the reason. I mean, they have, they have the capability at the facility um, to right. handle those things, but they, they yeah. unless you're getting your whole bin swapped out, right. they, they're just like, it's hard enough already. The compost buckets we have at home are like so gross anyhow. I mean, let alone if we had meat in there and fish bones. <laughs> I can't imagine. And you, and you talked about, you talked about, um, you know, office buy-in. I thought that was really fascinating what you said that we're all salespeople. And we, you know, our committee has a lot of people who've been in, you know, sustainability leaders for, you know, decades. And there's always that issue of, you know, teaching people how to, you know, fill a, <laughs> fill a, a dishwasher or just to do yeah. the work, you know, just to, just yeah. to do it. And how do you, how do you get your team so that it's not you, like you said, wagging your finger at them. And how, how would you propose we address that in a, in a manual? <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I'm, I, it's still an ongoing challenge f for us, you know, um, you know, and, it, you know, it, it, for all of us, for all of us, me too, you know, I get that, uh, I'm like, oh, I'm kind of, you know, like, oh, I don't really feel like doing this, but, you know, I have to set at least that example. So I, under I understand it's like just people being people. Uh, getting the buy, I think getting the buy-in is is really the communication, and like we show, like we showed with the the real um, sort of like measurable uh, composting, reducing our trash by fifty percent, um, and kind of showing them you know where things go on you know the, the we don't I'd love to have a picture of the recycling facility, um, but it, you know it has to be real to people. Um, and uh, you know, most people, you know, we have a, we have a lot of younger st staff as well who have grown up with this. You know, I didn't grow up with it. You know, we were talking about it earlier. That's you know, I wasn't recycling until the '90s. You know, and but, but most people who are of younger staff, the younger staff, they've you know, this is more in their wheelhouse. So, um, uh, so that's great. That's great. They're they're more used to it than than um, than others. So. I don't, you know, I don't have a magic speech to give to have people follow the rules. Is um, we're kind of all in this together. <laughs> you know, right. I just so it uh, looks like you're you're creating this like really deep um, awareness for the entire office about what is happening. It's not magically disappearing. It's going here and over here. And I really liked what you said about. You know, if someone che is chewing gum, they can't put that in your bin. Their bin, they have to walk down the hall. And so they're, you know, that is really training a, a new culture, right, of sustainability. Um, right. And just ha having that uh, trash bin at your desk. Pack in, pack out. Really great. Well, look, we're at the hour. <laughs> Five minutes. Anyone else jump in? <laughs> There's a question. Um, how does the dishwashing service work 
Uh, we have two dishwashers, uh, one in each kitchen. And then, oh, I mean, that's a whole other thing. Can I, I, I can just talk about people not even putting their dishes in the dishwasher and leaving them in the sink. That's, that's my, I, I have a lot of shame, shame emails that goes out like that. So everyone, there's, um, there's dishwashers available. You go right from, you know, rinse it out, put it in the dishwasher like you would do at home or put it in the sink like you might do at home, but don't put it in the sink. And then um, uh, they are washed at the end of the day when we have the, uh, the cleaning crew come in and then uh, put away at the end of their shift. So there, you know, usually takes okay. two hours. Um, and we did find there was some, uh, some sort of formula. I can't remember if it's, it's formula or some sort of, uh, reason that actually that we, there was a question is that are you using more energy and more water by doing your dishes than using all compostable products that get composted and the answer is Alexis <laughs> oh gosh um well our coworker answered this and she's an L like a life cycle assessment expert so she had a very complicated answer but I think she said that it's definitely better to uh, put your dishes in the dishwasher as long as you aren't or you're using them enough times before you throw them away. So if they're you know dishes that you're using for years and years, it definitely makes more sense to dishwash. Is that? Yeah, yeah, correct? that was it. Yeah, because okay. it takes it takes a lot of energy because even the stuff that gets composted, we're still replacing those in our stock with something that is manufactured. It takes a lot of energy yeah. to create. Um, so we just have to create more instead instead of reusing more, and um, you know the into the other thing that we ha we have this sort of newer saying that we have to use around here is that as far as um, uh, deciding what goes where in your trash is the end is like if you have a doubt throw it out because it's better for something to actually go in the trash than to contaminate an entire stream. Um, so again, we're try we're we're always asking for more examples. Like bring bring me something I haven't seen. Yeah, you know, love it. Bring it along. You know, I want to see it. Like, you know, challenge us on, on what we can figure out uh, if it can be recycled or reused in some way. So um, there is a when in doubt, throw it out. Yeah, don't buy compostable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, town in Marin County just passed a, an ordinance. Um, and basically, if it looks like plastic, if it feels like plastic, if it tastes like plastic, et cetera, it's plastic. And yeah. the problem with the compostables is they've actually found more chemicals in them than regular plastic. And wow. um, they destroy, you know, they, there's nowhere to put them because there are no industrial <laughs> facilities almost anywhere. So it's, it's really a marketing, you know, like you guys were talking about marketing. That's another yeah. marketing scheme uh, as well. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, it's just the general rule is that we got to really reduce all this plastic stuff. Yeah. And I think there's, I think it's, I, there's a lot, there's a long way, long way to go. Um, but, and, and plastic does have its use in the world as well, um, especially if it's reused and it's, uh, uh, you know, for, for a material, it's not, you know, it's just, this, you know, this one, two time use plastic that sort of the problem, you know, I can just, maybe I got to get down to showing people sea turtles or something like that. Or, <laughs> yeah. We got to bring the animals out. Yeah. The, old, the old 70s and 80s methods. I haven't seen that one in a while. Maybe that's, that's the key. Yeah. Bring out the animals. <laughs> I, had, I had one question about yeah. um, if you do anything like with wastewater from like your sinks uh, mm. and all that in the building. Yeah, we would love to. That was that was looked into, I think, when the building was renovated. Um, but it was, you know, it's a, it's a considerable cost. It's um, what I would, I would love to be able to. Um, we, you know, we have a huge roof. We have, a, you know. 20,000 square foot roof and we and all of that uh, storm water that comes off of that roof um, just goes into the sewer. So um, down the line, I'll tell you two things and we'll keep everyone down the line. That would be a great project to have some uh, cistern to collect just the rainwater um, or even a green roof. Um, but I'm not sure our roof is um, uh, structurally sound enough to have have a green roof. That's one thing. But 
Yeah, it's a great question. We would love to, and all the gray water and our, you know, and just even use all of the uh, rainwater, you know, flush the toilets. Um, that would that would be great. So it's on the horizon. Um, our biggest, our, you know, we sort of do these things in increments. After you know, we've we've done all, ever, ever since we started occupying the building. After you get every, all the all the basics in, then we can start fine tuning with these other projects. That would be a great one. Uh, what we're really excited about right now is we are this year and the projects I'm working on is we are converting all of our um, gas boilers to electric boilers. So we are mm. getting all of our gas boilers offline, which, you know, it, it's too bad because they're like 99.9% efficient in only like four years, but we're really committed to um, getting off. And that'll be the last of our fossil fuels. We won't have any other connection. And since all of our, um, uh, energy that we buy is uh, is um, renewable. We buy all uh, uh, mostly wind. We will, as soon as we get our electric boilers in, be technically net zero. Um, just to show as you know a great example for the, the our clients and other you know buildings that we're doing. Uh, it's an exciting project. It's a big project. It's it is not for the faint of heart for like the <laughs> changing all the all of the stuff over. Um, and you know, if, if we could have done this initially with the, with the building, so we're basically, instead of using gas to heat water, uh, that goes through all of our heating, uh, coils in the building, we're going to be using electric and that's also going to cost probably 40% more out of pocket, uh, that most buildings, if probably, if you were trying to do a new building or, um, uh, renovate buildings, you know, most, uh, facilities, managers or the owners of the building and say they don't want they don't want to do that because it, you know it's 40 percent more in electricity and I, I understand that so um you know eventually that there will be some scale to that and it's it's hopefully get it, it will get cheaper but we don't know it's an exciting project so we can check we, we can talk about build, building energy on a on a uh on yeah, a, another call like someday a, so when, when, when the we're, decarbonization when we're done with, call yeah yes when, yeah. We're done, when we're done with this project <laughs> <laughs> if I survive it. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I'll survive it. For both to both of you for for coming today and we'll, well thanks for we'll, having us. Yeah, we'll be in touch. Absolutely. All right, all thanks right. Thanks so much, Maria. Thanks everybody. Nice Have to a, meet y'all. All right, thank you. Make sure to break down your break down your cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. And don't buy I, fake fake compostable plastic. Don't buy okay. those. No. <laughs> All right. Thank Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.